There's one man standing on the stage, one of the great stages in the game. He takes the title at Tigers Tournament. Joaquin Neiman is the next star in the game of golf. Winning a PA Tour event, uh, getting a trophy, having Tiger there, I mean, there's nothing that can beat this. You get a win at a place like this, puts you into another stratosphere. Yeah, as a young boy, a bit like Tiger, I've been playing golf since two with plastic clubs, was winning tournaments since six. I was seven years old when I got my first pair. Tiger is the reason I play golf. He made it cool. It's gonna make me fly. Tiger, Michael Jordan, they're up in that upper echelon that no one else has ever touched. I touched the net. Mom, I touched the net. This is the best day of my life. I can speak for a lot of the guys out here on tour that we just idolized him growing up and wanted to be like him. Oh, as a player, that's what you dream of. When you're on the putting green, you've got an eight-footer to beat Tiger Woods. When I was eight or nine years old, he was my idol, and I probably copied everything that he did, like a lot of kids my age did. Man, I want to be like Tiger, so like if more people are watching, more kids are going to want to do that. It made the game more competitive. It's Max Homer, his second win on the PGA Tour on his favorite course, Riviera. I've been watching this tournament my whole life why I fell in love with golf. Tiger, another reason I'm into golf. I was trying to fly without leaving the ground because I wanted to be like Tiger Woods. Right. I wanted to be him. I wanted to be that guy. I wanted to touch the rim. Wow. City of Champions now. Dodgers, Lakers, me now. So it's a weird feeling. An icon in red and black, wearing that signature Nike swoosh, taking his sport to new heights as he brought eyes to TVs all across the globe in 1996. Much like Michael Jordan left his mark on basketball, Tiger Woods influenced the way the game of golf is played today. 30 years ago, a 16-year-old boy from Cypress, California, teed it up in his very first PGA Tour event at Riviera Country Club. He now hosts the same event down the road from where he grew up. Yet. It's the generation that he inspires that tees it up in his presence. What would it mean to be handed a trophy by Tiger Woods? It would be nice to see Tiger and give him a handshake with a trophy on the side. This is a prestigious event with the legacy of Tiger Woods, right? Everything together adds up to a very, very unique trophy ceremony to get handed by the best of a generation and arguably the best ever. It's something I dreamed about as a kid. This is Tiger's event. And Riviera is, I, I would say, the purest test of golf uh, that we play on the PGA Tour. You definitely feel some of Tiger's influence here with this, this golf tournament. It's pretty cool to, to be a part of. Not just being Tiger's event, but it's, it's LA, I'm home. Tiger obviously being kind of that childhood hero and, and someone I looked up to growing up. Everything kind of accumulates to this one spot here at Riviera. Joining the best in the world at Riviera were a pair of first timers, Charlie Sif from Memorial Exemption recipient, Aaron Beverly, and collegiate showcase champion, Michael Brennan. We want to give these kids the opportunity to understand where your weaknesses are. Just having that experience in the back of your pocket, it does wonders for your confidence, knowing that, hey, you know what, this is what it's like on tour. So when I get there, I know what to expect. It's not a big, huge unknown. It is a legendary setting. This is a very historical site. I can't name another golf course that we play on every year on a tour basis that has no water. And we still struggle on it. The angles bring on all these challenges and creates so much strategy in every shot. It's brilliant. 
It's a very tricky golf course. The majority of winners that have played here and have won here are guys who can shape the ball both ways and are very proficient at hitting, especially the irons, the correct distance. From our tournament host, Tiger Woods. Pressure, it'll test you and teach you and place you either way on one side of history and what history could be made by a 23-year-old Chilean from Santiago, Joaquin Neiman, trying to go wire to wire. Coming this week, I was feeling really confident about my game and I was able to handle during the, the week. Neiman seizing control of this event right at the start, 63 Thursday, 63 on Friday. He shatters the 54-hole scoring record. Obviously, I play my best golf on Thursday and Friday. And obviously, I knew that the weekend gonna be, it was going to be hard. It's going to be a battle. This week, we had all the top 10 players in the world. Oh, oh get out of here. Strike down the jaw. Anytime you're in your city that you grew up or you have some type of special connection, it just brings a little more out of you to play really great golf. Cole Morikawa, could it be his day? Neiman really needs to make a birdie if he's going to solidify that gap. The best players are here, and that proves myself that I can be competing with the top guys. Anything Colin can do, I can do better. Neiman, first player ever from Chile to win on the PJ Tour, trying to do it for the second time. I knew I was good in Chile, I was winning tournaments, but obviously you, you want to be here on the PJ Tour. I think being able to have the opportunity to come to the United States when I was 14, it worked out well. It's exciting when you see a talent like this. Fans clamoring for his attention. If you're inspiring to be golfing, you see another guy who's not much older than you doing it, how motivating is that? Every time I go back to Chile, I feel that the game is growing. There's a lot of kids starting to play. There's a lot of golf academies starting to grow. So it's, it's beautiful to see. His home country, a football mad country. Now they have a golfer. He's got a big placement now on the world stage of golf. I'm a big fan of young kids working hard. So it's, it's nice to be there and see what they're doing. And it remembers me also when I was on that stage. And being able to do the same for them right now is really nice. Santiago, Chile has given the world a great new champion at one of the biggest events. Nino Pereira is there. Carlos Ortiz, Angela and Sergio Garcia to salute the great young star that a lot of the world found out truly how great he is this week. <laughs> Having them here on 18th waiting for me to see me receiving the trophy was something really special. Nothing like this is amazing and seeing the Chilean flag right there gives me a little more speechless. It was awesome having Tiger there. He's one of my idols. I always watch him on TV and I still do. Joaquin Neiman's inspiration in Chile draws parallels to the waves Tiger makes around the globe. But the young champion isn't the only one carrying the torch outside the U.S. Japan's greatest golfing export getting a win in the 50th state. Abraham Anser has his first PGA Tour victory. Oh, Carlos Ortiz. Since Tiger joined the PGA Tour in 1996, 109 international players claim victory on tour, often resulting in Tiger-esque impact on their home nations, like eight-time champion Hideki Matsuyama. <laughs> Hideki's the hometown hero. If the Olympics were in Japan for the rest of my life and I won every time, I think Hideki would still be the number one guy. Coming from the traditional golfing hotbeds, to have a person from Japan win the Masters Tournament and deal with class and then what his caddy did, you know, bowing on the 18th green, that is perfect traditional Japanese culture of paying respect 
an homage to you know what they had just accomplished, but to the past. Hideki is humble as he is, he's great. As two of the four Mexican tour winners, Abraham Anser and Carlos Ortiz, embrace the roles they play back home. I like that me and Carlos are doing a little bit to grow the game, and I know there's a lot of kids looking at us, and, and it makes a difference how we act, how we play. As the emotion pours out of Carlos, all of that hard work coming to fruition. I'm just happy always to put the name of my country up high, and, and I'll do always do my best to keep making my country people happy. A lot of support for this Los Angeles area golf prodigy. You can hear certain guys have this deeper sound to their golf shots. And I'm warming up, hitting balls, and I, you hear this sound. There's a good ball striker, you know, a couple stalls away from me, and I look back, and it's Colin. It's been a dream his entire life to be number one in the world, Colin Morikawa. And if he wins today, he will achieve that goal. You watch him play, it's very consistent, very solid, and he just a guy who's gonna be around here for a very long time, winning tournaments for a very long time. People get compared to Tiger all the time when they you know, have a good streak because he really owns all the records. Records are there to show who's the best, but to create a legacy is, is to show what, what your game's about. I've gone through the YouTube rabbit hole watching Tiger highlights. You grew up just wanting to be something like that on the golf course. I definitely take elements of watching Tiger when I was young and try to be like him in certain ways. But for the most part, you know, I've learned you just have to be yourself out here. And everyone has their own path. And I'm kind of trying to create my own here on the PGA Tour. So influential for any young kid growing up. I mean, he made the sport cool. He wanted to play it. I was watching in Italy probably quite late at night. It was hard not to watch Tiger play. The, the excitement he brought to the course was, was incredible. And you know something special was going to happen basically any week that he was playing on tour. If you're watching, you're like, man, I want to be like Tiger. So like, if more people are watching, more kids will want to do that. So it made the game more competitive. You know, like the back end to the front, you know, it's just way harder to win. In a sense, we literally are Tiger's kids because we grew up watching him and we're, you know, on a chipping green trying to just like drip, put golf balls into the hole and make the putts that Tiger makes. I was 16 years old and wanting to be a golf pro and it was just like this perfect timing to inspire not only me but obviously a whole generation of golfers to, to be uh, like Tiger. In the beginning, I made my first hole in one when I was eight at number 12 at Hartwell. Beating my dad for the first time when I was 11 at the Navy golf course. My roots are here in Southern Cal. I was fortunate enough to have grown up with champions. The Raiders won two Super Bowls. The Lakers won five championships. The Dodgers won two World Series and then you have Gretzky kicking the Kings to the Stanley Cup Finals. This was the home of champions. That's what I grew up watching and emulating. I first came here, I think, back when I was in single digits in age. So uh, it's been a while. This was the first professional event I'd ever been to. And just to watch the, the guys play and guys I've seen on TV, I just remembered the quality of sound that they were making, the solidness of strike. That's something that blew me away. I didn't meet anybody. I didn't get any autographs. I just watched. It was neat to see the guys that I had looked up to. I had grown up watching as a kid and then eventually being out here on tour, playing against them, with them. In 1992, Tiger Woods took his first steps in his Hall of Fame career with his inaugural PGA Tour start at Riviera. 
on the tee from Cypress, California, amateur Tiger Woods. I had my credential, if you look at it, in my left front pocket. And I remember on the range, I actually hit it. I'm like, maybe I should move this. But yeah, but they won't let me in the tournament. So if you look out there in my left front pocket, I got my little credential there. And don't put it there, it's a bad spot. Now I was in high school. It was like going from playing JV baseball to all of a sudden facing Nolan Ryan. Like that's how, the, the, that's how big a jump that felt like. I thought I played well, I shot 72, 75, and I felt like I could have improved maybe about what, four shots better. I was still 17 back. It was quite humbling. Having that exemption at, at that age allowed me to understand how far I had to go, how much I had to work. Perseverance, that's what allowed me to get here. I persevered, I worked my, my butt off, I went out there and earned it in the dirt, uh, which allowed me to yeah, get on tour. Southern California Junior, Junior Golf Program was incredible. That I was able to go to a golf course that had CC at the end of it. Like, oh my God, I'm gonna play greens that are cut, you know, fairways that are mown, bunkers that are raked. These are neat things. I grew up on public golf course. In the beginning, I had my challenges. I had my frustrations about you know trying to be involved in the game of golf and fought through them and here we are. It's neat to see uh, any of the kids from, from SoCal do well. We all take great pride in where we grew up, how we grew up, and uh, we're all SoCal natives. There's a certain vibe being a person from SoCal just wish I was a little bit younger so that I could compete against him for a number of years to see what Colin's done winning two major championships and to have Max win last year. It's exciting to see these guys develop and grow. I think anybody around my age has had a huge influence from, from Tiger Woods. He's right in my wheelhouse of right was when I was beginning to kind of take golf seriously. When I was six, he was winning the Masters by a million. Changed the landscape of golf forever during that time period. He made golf cool. He made it athletic. He made winning seem like the only thing that was important. And yeah, he made it fun for a kid to go to the golf course and, and try to, you know, aspire to be like him. Now as I get older, it's the aura and it's just something about him. I, I cannot put my finger on it, but it just makes you want to be the one on TV kind of doing something like he was doing. I started coming here when I was like two or three years old. A bunch of memories. One year, the event got moved to Valencia Country Club, which is my hometown. We were watching that. Uh, Tiger and Billy Mayfair were in a playoff. I came here as a fan of the game, but also as I got older as a student trying to learn how to get better, how to play like my golf heroes played on a golf course that I knew was a good test. Inspired by fellow SoCal native Tiger Woods, Max Homa captured his second career win last season at the Genesis Invitational, less than an hour from where he grew up. Max Homa, his second win on the PGA Tour on his favorite course, Riviera. Winning it, as a kid, obviously I thought about it. I think that's the innocence of being a kid. Uh, anything seems possible. Winning Tigers of NLA is pretty much the coolest thing we could have ever thought of doing. That's one for my record books that'll never get touched. It's silly to think that that was even allowed. It feels like it should be illegal. Uh, I'll never forget standing on that practice putting green, shaking his hand and, and you know, talking to him a little bit about winning that golf tournament and, and you know, kind of just thanking him for what he's done for the game of golf. This is where it all started for Charlie. He paved the way for guys like my dad to start the game and be a part of the game. Having the Cipher exemption here, it means a lot to me. Charlie was, he was like my grandpa. I ended up naming, you know, my son after him and he was so influential in my career. It was only apropos that we named the exemption after him. He just wanted to just play the tour and was denied many times. We don't want to have other amateurs you know, feel that. We want to have them have that experience to be able to play the tour. I got a call from one of the guys at Tigers Foundation and I uh, answered the phone. He said, is this Aaron Beverly? I said, yes, sir. I'm just calling to 
let you know that you've been chosen for the Charlie Sifford exemption. You'll be playing in the Genesis. I stepped outside and I just had the biggest smile on my face and kind of overwhelmed Charlie Sifford, being the first African American to earn his tour card. I was trying to live up to that legacy of his, and it means a lot. Awarded annually since 2009, the Charlie Sifford Memorial Exemption at the Genesis Invitation represents the advancement of diversity in the game of golf. Five former recipients have spent time on the PJ Tour, including J.J. Spawn, who claimed his very first career victory this season. Now separated by nearly two decades and 82 PJ Tour victories, the 2022 recipient Aaron Beverly and tournament host Tiger Woods share a unique bond as Beverly made his very first PGA Tour start at the same place Tiger did exactly 30 years ago. To be sitting here next to Mr. Woods is really cool. I had dreams of one day playing against him and competing against him, and my dreams never got so far to be sitting, you know, doing a press conference with him, but it's definitely bittersweet that I can't share that memory with my dad. He understands that probably better than almost anybody in the world. Similar to his childhood hero, Tiger, for Beverly playing at Riviera is a culmination of a dream inspired by his father and his first golf coach, Ron. So three years old, my dad gave me a little plastic golf set. And then as I got older, he would take me to a little nine hole course. And every Sunday we play at 6.30 in the morning and just grew to love golf. Following a standout collegiate career at Sacramento State, Aaron turned pro, setting his sights on the PGA Tour. I've spent a year playing on the McKenzie Tour in 2019. Then my dad passed, uh, kind of fell out of a, a love for golf just because he meant so much to me. Ended up going back to Sacramento State and serving as an assistant golf coach, and that really brought a joy for golf to me again. And last year, you know, played on the APJ Tour and had some success. A victory in November at Wilshire Country Club on the APJ Tour has been one of the highlights of Beverly's return to competitive golf. When you win at any level, it just builds your confidence. It's important that I always stuck to believing that I could achieve this, and every day I practiced, it was, you know, for a reason, for it had a purpose. So for it to be happening now, like I said, is just a validation of, of all of that. On the eve of his first PGA Tour start, Beverly received advice from former Charlie Sifford Memorial Exemption recipient, Cameron Champ. Hit the green. Hit the green. <laughs> Dude, that is so predictable. <laughs> that is so predictable. We've known each other, like I said, since we were probably 13, 12. Yeah, 12, yeah. 13 years old. So I grew up in the same programs and knew all the same people, played in the same stuff. So it's nice to see some guys come out of sack, because not many do. So, especially in golf. Hey. Give me five back. I'm happy to see him get the exemption this year and um, you know have this opportunity. He's kind of grew up in the same situation kind of I did. Sometimes all it needs is one opportunity I and mean, things can go from there. So you know, I'm super stoked for him. He'll be out here and play and um, get a little taste because I know he'll want some more. Playing in your first PJ Tour event is a tremendous honor and obviously being able to hit the first tee shot, I'm just going to make sure I can put fairway check in you know, my book and give somebody, everybody else something to strive for. First on the tee, from Fairfield, California, please welcome Charlie Sifford Memorial Exemption recipient, Aaron Beverly. I just asked him, what are you doing on the first hole? He said, I'm doing a pipe of two iron right down there and hit on the green. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I just think too. After leading off the event on Thursday morning, Beverly went on to forge yet another connection with his golfing idol. Just like Tiger Woods 30 years ago, Aaron Beverly begins his day with a birdie here at Riviera. Although there are a few indelible moments, Beverly ultimately missed a cut, but took away nothing but positives from his experience at Riviera. My dad would always tell me, no matter what, the sun still comes up tomorrow. And that's so true. You gotta make the most of it, so just enjoy yourself. A lot of people have called to, and you know, reached out and tell me, oh, this is an uh, opportunity of a lifetime. And I like to look at it as, no, this is just the first opportunity of a lifetime. Look at me, look at me. I'm a cool kid. I'm an individual.
unusual. Yeah, but I'm part of a movement. He's well on his way to being called the best ever. They told me to just do it. I listened to what that swoosh said. He's the idol of golf. I mean, he is our greatest golfer of, of my era, at least. Watched him on TV every weekend because he would seem like he was always in the hunt. Well, I can't think of, in an individual sport, a guy being that hot. You know, all of us want to win. I mean, that's just kind of inbreded in golfers. I would say the Tiger effect in that way. You know, he wanted to win so bad. He did it no matter what circumstances he was in. He was still able to pull it off um, and do things that uh, no one else has done since. He was definitely, you know, the driving force as a kid and still the story of my dad. When we were younger, I think I was probably seven. In Sacramento, McClellan Air Force Base is right next to Hagen Oaks. And there's a range right there. Every weekend, if there's a Learjet flying in, I'm like, hey, Tiger's coming home. So if the British Open, Tiger might be coming. That might be Tiger. Let's go out and, and, and hit some balls. That's kind of how he got me out to the course all the time, even though it wasn't Tiger. But later on, I found that out. and It was a little mad, but it got me out there. But it's just a funny story. While Tiger inspired a young Cameron Champ on the golf course, he also influenced the next generation to give back. Tiger's done some great things with his foundation. It's something that we always know as a family, we have to give back. We have to help the next one. When I turned pro, I had some early success, and we got my foundation going. And we wanted to create a fun experience for the kids, give them an opportunity to be seen. For me, I hit a little cut, so the ball goes left to right, the draw goes right to left. Growing up in the neighborhood, I did. Seeing the things I, I saw, I just was one of the lucky ones, to be honest. We didn't live in a great area. Where my grandfather lived was only two miles from us, and the difference in communities was drastic. Nobody in the neighborhood played golf. The high school teams don't have golf. There is, there, there's no golfers in, in the neighborhood. Baseball. There was no programs or there was nothing set in stone to get more kids. In the early 2000s, when Tiger came about, it was probably the same thing. I'm trying to do my small portion. I can only do so much. It's nice seeing other athletes and other people you know, doing the right thing. Coming from what I've come from, you know, you, you can't experience things unless you've experienced it firsthand. And a lot of that stuff changes you for life. We've had some tough situations, but you know, you can persevere through those and come out on top. That's just how I've been built. As we always heard, you know, golf is growing, golf is growing, but where is it growing? Is it growing financially or is it growing race-wise? How is it growing? And those are the real hard questions that, that need to be asked. Obviously, Tiger has been the biggest encouragement of them all, but even back then, it was very difficult to target those kids, to target those areas, and even to this day, it's still difficult, but now stuff is starting to trend in the proper direction for that change to happen. And Tiger continues striving to make a change for many. TGR Foundation and the Orwood Scholar Program has really been a family for me from the start. I know that I can always come to this community um, whenever I need something. For more than 25 years, Tiger Woods and his TGR Foundation has provided life-changing education resources for more than two million young people. A lot of these kids are first-generational kids that ever go to college. They have no one to talk to. It's our job to be able to provide that type of support and that type of leadership and guidance. Whenever I was afraid of like maybe like failing a class or not doing as well as I could, I would talk to someone in the TGR Foundation. They tell me about different campus resources that might exist. And I remember thinking, how do you know about that? But they were like, this is what we're here to do. A big focus for TGR Foundation is empowering students to discover their passions, explore college and career opportunities, and help students build a personal path to success. TGR Foundation programs are so impactful because they allow kids to get access to STEM programs that they don't traditionally have in schools. We are able to provide a deeper level of learning you know, in that field, and I think that's what separates us. They're able to tailor their resources and make it really individualized for each scholar. Each staff member has really gotten to know me and gotten to know what I need to be able to help me move forward. They are very intentional about facilitating and fostering a community. It was just so nice to see that all the small ways that people invested in me really have a big payoff.
when I got the invite, it was off the charts. I didn't expect it. I didn't think that I was good enough to play. I won a couple juniors, and that was about it. For me, it was a very eye-opening experience to see tour players play. I got a chance to see what it's like to be out on tour and, and have that experience, and then went home and said, hey, these are the things I need to work on. And to be able to have college kids come in here, this is where they want to end up, but then we get that exposure. It does wonders for your confidence. Building upon the tournament history of inclusion, this season the Genesis Invitational established a pathway player, awarded to the collegiate golfer with a minority background excelling on the course and academically. William & Mary's Ethan Mangum was named the inaugural pathway player, earning a special invitation to the collegiate showcase, where he joined other top collegiate players from around the nation, vying for that one final spot in the Genesis Invitational field. It's an awesome opportunity to not only be able to play here, but to meet a lot more people through an initiative that is growing the game. I played in the College Showcase in 2015 as a freshman. I could literally tell you every single shot I hit from that Monday. It was amazing. You go to play in that golf tournament, it was really special, especially in college. You don't really get to experience anything like that. It gave me some confidence going forward, knowing that I could compete on tour. Seeing how guys operate Monday through Wednesday, you don't see on TV. Seeing their routine, picking their brains about how they go about their golf game. I learned a lot that I still carry with me day in, day out when I play. Being the first pathway player, it's a great opportunity. There's nothing else like it right now. And so having the ability to be the first of something so special to the minority and African-American community of golf is huge. At the end of the day, it's about coming out here, having fun, smiling, and making as many birdies as possible. While on the West Coast, Mangum and his coach took time to retrace Tiger's tracks with a visit to his childhood course. To be out here at uh, the Navy golf course is pretty special. Tiger was the first athlete that I really aspired to be like and learn from growing up. And so watching him win majors after majors and winning championship after championship really inspired me to start on my journey. Playing here, and this is where he learned how to play with his father. It's pretty special. Earl did not let Tiger make excuses. <laughs> Come on. We learned one oh. thing about Tiger. He, he's accountable, and he shows up and he finds a way. Playing the Navy course was mixed emotions because at the time when I was trying to play with my dad, I wasn't old enough, in minimum age of 10. But when I did play with my dad, my mom would drop me off at the front part of the parking lot. I'd walk around the, the, the old back nine, the 18th hole, I'd hop in the ditch. You know, dad, former Special Forces, taught me how to, how to be sneaky. I'd walk and wait for dad on, under the bridge, under the third hole, camouflage, I'd grab a few bushes, and I'd sit there and wait for dad. Along the way, I'd find golf balls, right? So, golf balls in a ditch, and at the time, if you found a new balada ball, oh, I'm gonna save this for a tournament. Because uh, we didn't have enough money to buy, you know, fresh new balladas. And I'd wait there, and dad would yell out, you there? Yeah, pop, coming up. And I'd take off all the stuff, and I'd hop in this cart, and we'd go play until dark. And the rule was, you'd play until you lost your ball. And so, oh, Dad, I, I, I hit that to the right and it cut a little bit. So we got, you know, Dad would drive over there and find the ball. And so I ended up playing one day, I think I put like about 15 or 16 holes in the dark because I kept calling every shot. But playing in the dark was one of the greatest memories I've ever had with my dad. Uh, just learning the feel of and calling each shot and knowing what it felt like at impact, where that golf ball was going to be. Because I mean, if it wasn't there, my golf day was done and uh, I didn't want it to end. Growing up, I, I did a lot of sneaking on the golf courses, <laughs> as bad as that sounds. But back home in, in Mississippi, a lot of golf courses closed early. And so I used to sneak on the back nine, play the loop, play three or four holes uh, before it got pitch black. Growing up, this was the first shot I wanted to teach myself. It's like, wow, that Tiger Woods stinger. 
really just shows you the level of impact and control that he really had through his swing, which is pretty special. And so, yeah, being here really does put it into perspective of just how impressive and just how talented the guy really is. There it is. Ethan, he's one of the few that's that's had some championship success. He's, he's walked the walk, he's been there, he's done that. He's quick to help others. He pushes himself. You know, he thinks that he can get to the highest level if he works at it. Tiger uh, honoring him with this award uh, is, is really special. It's something Ethan cares deeply about, our school cares deeply about. And at the end of the day, it's, it's bigger than just the game of golf or myself. I mean, it's about really growing the game and, and having that pathway for the next generations to come to be able to help diversify the sport, get their opportunity to play on the biggest stage in amateur golf with the opportunity to play against the greatest players in the world. So the opportunity is literally like none other and to have that uh, partnered with TGR and the Genesis is even more special. At the Collegiate Showcase, Mangum competed for a spot in the Genesis field, paired alongside Charlie Siff Memorial Exemption recipient, Aaron Beverly. Me and Aaron have known each other for a little while, just through various minority golf events, and I got excited because I knew it was going to be a, a good match. Playing with Ethan was amazing. He, uh, we started on 10, he rattled off three birdies in a row. I was like, oh man, we might have a course record on our hands. Throughout the day, it was an awesome experience watching him pound the ball, but also pounding the ball past him sometimes. He's just a great young man. He's got a great spirit about him, very confident, plays the game golf the way it's supposed to be played. And when you look at a guy like that, you just know that golf's in good hands moving forward. Mangum finished in a tie for 11th and walked away with plenty of experience to draw on. It shows me how my game compares to the best amateurs in the world the best players in the world. And so it shows me exactly what I need to work on. Wake Forest Michael Brennan arrived at Riviera 19th in the world amateur golf rankings and was paired with former event champion and fellow Demon Deacon, Will Zalatoris. I've played with him a few times now and He's given me a lot of info and just insight into what it's like to play golf over the last year. And I hope to just follow in his footsteps and do what he's doing right now. I've known Michael since before he got to college. He's a heck of a player. He'd be top 10 in driving on tour distance wise. I mean, today, you know, and obviously seeing him hit a few irons in there to, you know, Stony where he didn't even have to mark it and just tap it in was just kind of like, man, this is making this place look easy. With the birdie eagle stretch on 10 and 11, Brennan paced the field shooting a showcase record 5 under 66 to claim victory and earn a final spot in the Genesis Invitational. Proud of the kid, he did, he did awesome today. I'm just so excited to be able to test my game against the best players in the world. Before making his PGA Tour debut, Brennan took advantage of a practice round with one of the best in the world. My assistant coach played with Rory in junior stuff back in Ireland and knows his caddy Harry pretty well. Michael shot a great score on Monday to qualify, so it was good to be out there and play with him. And he was asking me a bunch of questions. And I was like, you just shot 66 yesterday. What do you need to know? <laughs> Playing with Rory was, it's a dream. A great young player and you know it's it's nice to be in a position where you know, you can help the the sort of younger generation coming through play well this week that was awesome yeah Enjoy thank you it. appreciate it at tiger's event brennan had an impressive showing coming up just two strokes shy of the cut line but gaining valuable experience early in his career from countless rounds at the navy course with his dad to a national championship at stanford to 14 tour wins in the state, Tiger's California roots runs deep. His golfing impact on the West Coast is immeasurable, inspiring some of today's biggest players from the state and forging a legacy at Stanford, a golf program brimming with players who went on to the PJ Tour, including young star in the making, Maverick McNeely. 
I grew up practicing and playing at the Sanford Golf Course and uh, kind of always wanted to go there. One of the initiation things the seniors do for the freshmen is we go to team dinners every week and they just start grilling the freshmen on Stanford golf trivia. Tiger's pretty much, like, if, you, if you're in doubt, just say Tiger, he probably won it. I won 11 times there, but it took me four years. It only took him two. Literally no one was, uh, has left a, a bigger legacy than Tiger when he was there. He came to campus twice while I was there and he was incredibly generous with his time. He could have easily just gone to the other end of the range, but he hung out with us, told stories. It was the first time I'd seen the entire team out on the range at 7 a.m. on Saturday. I'm usually, I was usually the only one out there early on a weekend. I just feel like there's so many stories of Tiger and just like the magic he has with the golf ball. We had a, a little chipping green in our backyard and a little tee up on the hill so we could kind of hit down to the chipping green and it was like a full seven iron for me to hit at 50 yards. Tiger came over and dad of course showed him the chipping green. He said we sometimes hit balls into the canyon. Tiger said can I hit one? Dad gives him his old bubble shaft tailor made driver and tees up an old ball and says just aim at that house there's no way you can hit it. Tiger hits one, no warm up, no practice swing, anything and he goes ah oh, it's about 10 yards right and my dad's thinking yeah and about 400 yards short. He says, give me another ball. So throws him another ball and he hits it. He goes, that's right on it. And it was a super quiet night. And sure enough, bang, it hits the roof. And that's like, how is that even possible? It's like 450 yards away, like way downhill. They all kind of start laughing and they kind of duck and hide. Tiger goes, I want to do that again. He hits it again and shocker, Tiger drills it again. And he goes, all right, that's, that's enough. We can't, can't do that anymore. You definitely feel some of Tiger's influence here. It's definitely one of the ones that I circle on my calendar every year and, and one that I really want to play well in. I think there's just no more exciting player to watch. And uh, anytime Tiger's playing, I'm watching. And I think that's true with a lot of people and that transcends just golf fans, which is, is pretty special in our sport. I mean, you have to root for him. It's just so cool to have him in our game the doors that have been opened to me through the game of golf, and I, I want to share that with as many people as possible. I think it's the greatest game ever. It teaches you so much about yourself and about so many different things, and uh, whether it's the first tee or uh, the APGA or just all these organizations that are making the game more accessible and open. I love the game of golf because of what it teaches you, and I hope we can share that with as many people as possible. With today's young stars as evidence, Tiger has made a lasting impression on the game, both on and off the course. Since taking the world by storm 25 years ago with his first green jacket, through his aspiring return to competitive golf, the Tiger effect continues to leave its mark on those following in his tracks. When I was a kid, I dreamed of pulling a putt to beat Tiger Woods. I mean, that's why I wanted to play more golf, because of that. The amount of players he's influenced, the amount of people he's brought to the game. He changed how it's played. He kind of started that trend of turning pro earlier, turning pro younger, and getting out here quicker. The Tiger effect, obviously, guys are getting better, younger, faster. Now when kids come out, who's this next Tiger Woods? The immeasurable things are what's the most impressive, I think, the things that you can't put on a stat sheet. How many lives he's impacted, and that's his ultimate legacy. A lot of these kids who made it out here now, they have seen me basically grow up on the tour and are playing out here because they saw me play golf. That's pretty humbling. <laughs>